Welcome to the video for section 2.2, Direct Variation. Our objective is that we can write and interpret direct variation graphs. So let's begin by talking about what a direct variation function is. It is an equation in the form y equals kx, where y is by itself. Or if you wanted to get the k by itself, you would divide both sides by x. So you can see that we have the equation k equals y over x. k is known as the constant of variation. x represents the input values and y represents the output values. Make sure you note that the constant of variation k cannot equal 0. If that were the case, then the equation would just be y equals 0, which would not be a direct variation function. And look over to the right. I wrote k equals y over x. That says that the ratio of all output-input pairs, except for 0, 0, equals k, which is a constant of variation. So like I said, 0, 0 cannot be plugged in. We're going to explore what this means and how we can apply it to several different example problems in this lesson. In example one, we have two different tables of values. And for each of these functions, we need to determine whether y varies directly with x. If it does, then we need to figure out what the constant of variation is and also the function rule, also known as the equation. So let's focus in on the first table of values. We have 1, 2, 3, 6, and 4, 8. What we want to do, like I talked about earlier, is find out what the constant of variation is. If we get the same exact value for each pair of values, the x, y coordinates, then we will have a constant of variation and therefore we have a direct variation. If we get a different number for y over x for each of the coordinate pairs, then we don't have a direct variation. So as you can see, when I took each of the y values and put it over the x values, we got 2 for our y over x ratio. That means this is a direct variation, so I wrote y varies directly with x, and the number for the constant of variation is 2, so I wrote k equals 2. So our function rule, we just need to take the 2 and plug it in for the k. So y equals kx, and therefore y equals 2x would be the equation for this table of values. For part B, I took the y values and put them over the x values. As you can see, it works out for the first two pairs, but then the third pair is not equal to the other two pairs because they reduce to 4 for the first two pairs, and then 11 over 3 does not reduce to 4. So therefore, since y over x is not constant, y does not vary directly with x, and that means we cannot write a direct variation equation for this table of values. Example 2 is pretty similar to example 1. The only difference is that in this example we'll be given an equation and we need to determine if it's a direct variation, whereas in example 1 we are given a table of values. So let's focus in on the two examples that were given here, part A and part B. We need to figure out can these equations be rewritten into the form y equals kx as I wrote on the right side. Now please note there is going to be no non-zero constant term, so there's like a blank space there basically. That's also known as the y-intercept being zero, and we'll discuss y-intercepts more in depth in the next lesson video. For example A, we have 3y equals 7x. What we want to do is divide both sides by 3 to isolate the y and we get 7 over 3x. There is no non-constant or non-zero constant term that comes after that. So this means that this is a direct variation equation and the constant of variation is 7 thirds, which, which is the number in front of the x. For part b, we have the equation 7y equals 14x plus 7. What we want to do to isolate the variable y is divide both sides by 7 which includes both terms on the right side. So that means we have 14x over 7, which reduces to 2x, and 7 over 7, which reduces to 1. So we have the equation y equals 2x plus 1. Because we have that plus 1 after the 2x, that is a non-zero constant term, which means this will not fit into the form y equals kx. Therefore, this is not a direct variation equation, and we cannot write the constant of variation. For example three, we'll use the knowledge that I wrote at right. 
So we talked about so far the constant of variation is equal to y over x. So say for example we're given two coordinate pairs and we know that this is a direct variation because the problem says varies directly. We can take those ordered pairs and set them equal to each other. So you can see right here y1 over x1 equals y2 over x2. This is true for all ordered pairs in the form x1, y1 and x2, y2 as long as x1 and x2 are not equal to zero because as we know we cannot divide by zero. So we're going to use this knowledge for example three. Suppose that y varies directly with x and y equals 9 when x equals negative 15. What is y when x equals 21? So this means we're basically given two coordinate pairs and we can set it up just like I showed you at the right. So I labeled our x1, y1, x2, y2 values and now I'm going to use the exact format that I have written here to substitute those values into. So y1 is 9, x1 is negative 15, y2 we do not know so I'm just going to put y and then x2 we know is 21. From there you can see we have a basic proportion set up so we can cross multiply to solve. When we cross multiply we get 189 equals negative 15 y. Divide both sides by negative 15 to isolate the variable y and we find out that y is equal to negative 12.6. So that means that y is negative 12.6 when x is 21. In example four, we have a real life application of direct variation, so let's read this together. A salesperson's commission varies directly with sales. For $1,000 sales, the commission is $85. What is the commission for $2,300 sales? As you can see, the word problem contains the phrase varies directly, so that tells me that we can use the equation y equals kx. So step one, use this equation y equals kx to find k. So in a word problem, you always want to define your variables. So let's say that c stands for the commission, and let s stand for the sales. So we're going to be using the same format, the y equals kx, but instead of using x and y, we're going to be using s and c. So the equation is going to be c equals k times s. Now if you're not sure like which one goes where, like the x and the y, the c and the s, basically what you want to figure out is which variable depends on the other. Well, the sales is what determines how much commission you're getting. So that's why the S is in the X spot because remember the X is the independent variable and that determines the dependent variable Y or in this case the commission C. So now we can take our numbers that were given. C is 85 as I labeled above. And S is thousand dollars. So we plugged both of those in and then of course we want to solve for k. So divide both sides by a thousand and we get k equals 0 0.085. So that would be our constant of variation. Step two, we're going to use the constant of variation to create our direct variation equation for this situation and then we'll use that equation that we're just about to form to find the commission when sales equals $2,300. So let's take the constant of variation and create our basic equation. So we're continuing to use the form C equals K times S. Now let's take the constant of variation K equals 0 0.085 and plug that in. So there is our direct variation equation. Now let's take the 2300 and plug that in for S to find out what the commission will be. When you multiply those two values, you should get C equals 195.5. So that means for a sale 
of $2,300, your commission is going to be $195.50. So far in this lesson, we have learned how to work with direct variation equations, starting with tables and then equations. Now we're going to apply this knowledge and learn how to graph a direct variation function. Here's something you want to remember. The graph of a direct variation function is always a line through the origin. And remember, the origin is the coordinate 0, 0. So it's the center of the graph, this point right here. And take note at the right, I wrote y equals kx. Usually we don't write the plus zero, but as you know, you can always add zero to any equation and it's still true. So the y-intercept, if you remember slope-intercept form, which we will be discussing next lesson, the y-intercept is zero. So that is another way that you can definitely tell that the line is going to go through the origin. Now, in example five, we have two different equations that we're going to learn how to graph. They are both direct variation equations, because as you can see, there is no um, non-zero constant after the variable x. And since we are officially learning slope-intercept or relearning slope-intercept next lesson, I am not going to use the slope-intercept rules to graph. I'm instead just going to use an xy table to pick some points and plot. In part A, we have the equation y equals 3 fourths x, and we need to graph this. And whenever you have a fraction for the constant of variation k value, which is the 3 fourths in this situation, the best idea, if you want to get rid of the fractions for your x and y values when you plot, my suggestion is to pick multiples of the denominator. So in this case, the denominator is 4. So I'm going to choose 4, 8, and 12 for the x values because those are all multiples of the denominator 4. So when you substitute 4 in for the equation, you get 3 for the y. When you substitute in 8, you get 6. And when you plug in 12 for the equation, you get 9. So those are three coordinate points that we can plot now. So I plotted those three points on the coordinate plane, and then I put arrows on both ends to indicate that it does go on beyond those past three points. For part B, we have the equation y equals negative 2x. When I have the k value being a regular integer, I typically choose x values around 0. So in this case, I'm going to choose negative 2, negative 1, and 1. So when you plug in negative 2, you get 4. When you plug in negative 1, you get 2. And when you plug in positive 1, you get negative 2. So those are the three coordinates that we're going to graph. Since the coordinate pairs that we're dealing with in Part B are nice small numbers, we don't need to uh, have the increments be other, units other than 1. So I plotted the three points on the graph, and then I connected with arrows on both ends. So now you have several examples that show you how to work with direct variation functions. And you can see that both of these graphs did indeed go through the origin 0, 0. This will happen for every direct variation function. Here are our 2.2 lesson chick practice problems. Please write these down. Make sure you do them and come with any questions when we see each other next. Have a great day.